Why is XLOOKUP the best lookup yet? Well, let's have a look at what options we've had up to this point, ignoring some of the older database functions like dmin and dget. We go to lookup. The lookup function takes two forms, the array form and the vector form. Let's talk about the first one, the array form. The lookup function takes a lookup value. So let's say you've got a couple of columns of data. You've got work package in the first column and you've got the cam name in the second. You have the work package and you want to find the cam name. Well, the lookup value would be the work package number. Um, you would pipe in the array of the two columns and it would return the cam name. That's pretty good. But what if I have the cam name and I want to return charge number? Or what if I have more than two columns of data? Well, the array form doesn't really work that way. The array form assumes that the lookup value is going to be in the first column and the return value will always be in the last column. So if you pipe in an array of two columns, it'll give you the second column. But if your array has more than two columns, it's going to only give you the value in the last column. That's not ideal. That's not as useful as we would like. So what, uh, what, what happened is they took this array form and they upgraded it to the vector form. The imp primary improvement of the vector form is that it takes the array, the single array, and it breaks it out into a lookup vector and a result vector. What does that mean? Vector is just a fancy word for column. Uh, any, anytime I'm saying column, by the way, you can also substitute row if you're doing the horizontal versions of these. So what does it mean that the lookup vector and the result vector are now separate? Well, it's good for two reasons. Number one, it means that uh, you can designate, if you've got five columns, you can say, I want you to look in this column and return the value in this other column. It also means that the lookup column can be to the left or to the right of the return column. It's a big improvement. Um, but with the lookup function, there's still room improvement because both the array form and the vector form of this function default to giving an approximate match. So if you want exactly this charge number and the cam for exactly that charge number, you're not going to get it with the lookup. It's going to give you the next highest or the next the next value smaller in an alphabetized list of cams. So it can't if it can't find the cam name you're looking for, it's going to give you the next one that's close. So if you're looking for uh, if you're looking for you know for Tom, it's going to give you Tim if it can't find Tom because alphabetically Tim comes before Tom. So that's not really ideal. We don't really work with approximations uh, when we're doing these kind of lookups. So we need what we do need is the ability to get an exact match. And for that, we need VLOOKUP. So the primary improvement of VLOOKUP and its sister HLOOKUP, the primary improvement over LOOKUP was the ability to designate an exact match or an approximate match. So what else changed? We got, uh, we also retained the ability to designate which column to return the value from. So VLOOKUP works with any number of columns. They all have to be in the same array, however. So the uh, you, you, you can tell it which to return from, but from lookup, the vector form of lookup to vlookup, it went back to having a single array of data. What does that mean? That means that your lookup column has to be to the left of your return column. It can be any column or array, but the lookup has to be to the left. So that's not really ideal. Uh, the other thing about VLOOKUP, the other room for improvement, is that um, you know you can tell it to give you an exact match, which is great, but if you have an approximate match, it defaults to giving you the next item smaller. Well, that could be improved, couldn't it? Yeah, well, yes, it could. And that's what they did. So this is why we have XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP takes all those prior improvements and bakes them into one fancy new best lookup yet. Uh, we've got the ability to separate the lookup column and the return column, which means yeah, you can uh, you can designate exactly which column you want the return value from. It also means that with XLOOKUP, your lookup column can be to the left or to the right of your return column. So that's good. They you know retained that improvement from the vector form. We also have the exact the ability to to uh, get the exact match or the approximate match. Um, but as I said, VLOOKUP defaults to the next value smaller. Well, they got clever here, and with the match mode. Kind of borrowed the match type from the match function. If you ever use that, it's pretty fancy. You got three options, exact match, next item smaller, or next item greater. So they baked that into XLOOKUP as well. So it gives you much more options. And they added a fourth, which is uh, the ability to pipe in wildcards, which is pretty awesome. 
They also, if you've ever used VLOOKUP before, we've all seen it. You know, if you can't find, if they, if it can't find the value on an exact match, it's going to give you a pound NA. Well, that looks ugly on your worksheet and it makes you look like you've, you know, don't know how to use Excel. So what did we do? Wrapped it in an if statement or maybe an if NA. Um, so you could make it look like, oh, I know I, I, I handled this error. I know what I'm doing. That's baked right into the XLOOKUP so you don't have to wrap it with an if NA. Um, so that's a good improvement as well. And they also added the ability to, to tell XLOOKUP, hey, when you're looking for this, start at the top and then go to the bottom of my list. Or start at the bottom and go to the top. That's pretty cool. These are all great improvements. I think XLOOKUP is, is the best, but let's see it in action. Got an example for you that might be a little more relevant for people in our line of work. Let's say that you have you have a list of weeks ending and the associated hours in those weeks. But, you know, your PM or somebody else has said, hey, hey listen, I need those bucketed by fiscal period. Oh, man, I can't get that out of the project. You can if you use the clear plan toolbar pretty soon. But that said, how do we do this? Well, let's try to find which fiscal period March 15th falls into. Okay, so if we look over in the list, 315 would fall between 226 and 42, but it's we have to use an approximate match. And when you can't, when XLOOKUP doesn't find it, what do we want it to return? Do we want it to go, well, find the next value smaller or the next value, uh, value greater? Well, because these are fiscal end dates, if it's greater than this, then it automatically goes into this bucket. So return the next value greater and return the value in this column, which is the label. Okay, so let's see how this works. We want it to, we want to say uh, X lookup. I want you to go look for this value in my fiscal end list and give me the matching label. If you can't find it, give me an, give me an NA. And oh, by the way, I want to do an approximate match, but what do I want to use? Well, 315 falls between 226 and 42 because these are fiscal end dates. Which bucket should it go in? Well, it should really go in the same bucket as 42. So find an approximate match. And when you can't find it, you give me the next value greater. So it can't find 315. It's going to then fall, fall lesser into 226 or fall greater into 42. We want it to fall too. So we want the exact match or next larger item, which is a one. And then we want to say, start at the top and search down. So what do we get? Fiscal March, is that correct? 315 falls between 226 and 42. That's fiscal March, the label's 20, 20, 2021-03. Okay, seems like that works. So now we can fill in our data, X lookup, look up this value and my fiscal end period, return the label. Again, if not found, do NA. Uh, we want to do the exact match or next larger. We just figured out, and you can start at the top and go to the bottom. Control enter, fills that all the way down. And now you've got your hours by week now bucketed into fiscal period. Pretty cool. So let's do another quick example, earn schedule. Let's say I've got a range of data. I've got my period numbers here. I've got my BCWS here, and that's cumulative BCWS, and I've got my cumulative BCWP. So for earned schedule, we wanna first find out, well, we've earned 299. How many periods did we plan to, um, to take in order to earn that much? So if I do 299, oof, well, that's period two. Okay, so what did I do here? X lookup, I want you, X lookup, we're going to go look for the BCWP. I named these ranges. I want you to try to find it in the BCWS range. That's the lookup array. I want you the return array to be the period, right? But we're probably not going to find an exact match. Uh, you can do an, you know, if you don't find it, do an NA. You're not going to find an exact match. So what I want you to do is find an exact match for the next smaller item. So the next if it can't find 299, it, that's right between 200 and 300. So what should it do if you know it can't find 299? Should it go to period three? No, because we haven't earned 300 yet. We're still at, two, still at 299, which means we got to fall back to the er to the next item smaller. So that's what we want: exact match or next smaller item. So we want negative one, and you can start at the top and go down. So there we go. The earned schedule for 299. We were supposed to have earned that much in period two. It's taken us four periods 
to earn that and we still haven't you know we're still not there yet so anyway that's a an example of x lookup and how you can use the approximate matching for some of these more advanced features um, Here's just a quick table of the capability improvements between lookup, vlookup, and xlookup. So you can take a screenshot of that and have a look at it another time. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.